Hello everybody. Today we are going to read a story about Frida Kahlo. She is a famous artist and this is her picture right here. So the book is called The Life of Frida Kahlo. I am Frida Kahlo, a Mexican artist famed for both the vibrant colors in my paintings and my colorful life. With my striking face, I was the queen of the self-portrait long before photo selfies of today. Join me on my incredible journey from unknown artist to feminist role model whose work now sells for millions. My full name is Magdalena Carmen Frida Kahlo E. Calderon, and I was born in Coyoacan on the outskirts of Mexico City. My date of birth was the 6th of July, 1907, but I would later claim that I came into the world in 1910 to coincide with the beginning of the Mexican Revolution. My father, Wilhelm, was a German photographer. He immigrated to Mexico when he was young, and later he met and married my mother, Miltilde. They had two daughters, Miltilde and Adriana, before me, and another daughter, Christina, after me. We all lived together at La Casa Azul, the Blue House. When I was six years old, I became seriously ill with polio. I wasn't able to leave my bed for nine months, and when I finally did walk again, it was with a limp because the disease had permanently damaged my right leg. From then on, it remained shorter than the other leg. I had been kept in isolation during my recovery and was very lonely. So to aid my recovery, my father encouraged me to play football, go swimming, and even to wrestle. In 1922, I was one of the first 35 girls admitted to the renowned National Preparatory School. I was academically gifted, studying medicine, botany, and social sciences. I also joined the Young Communist League and the Mexican Communist Party, choosing to socialize with a group of students who were intellectually and politically like-minded. During this that time, I became very interested in Mexican culture. It was the start of a lifelong fascination with the Mexican side of my heritage, and I began to experiment with the traditional clothes and jewelry in bold patterns and bright colors, which would later become my trademark look. When I was 18, my first boyfriend, Alejandro Gomez Arias, and I were involved in a terrible traffic accident. On, on the 17th of September, 1925, the bus we were traveling in hit a train. Thankfully, Alejandro had only minor wounds, but I suffered serious injuries. A handrail pierced my hip and I broke many bones, including my spine, collarbone, and pelvis. I spent several months in the Red Cross Hospital in Mexico City before returning home to continue my recovery there. In the years that followed, I had around 30 operations and lived with constant chronic pain. While I was confined, while I was confined to my bed in the months after the accident to take my mind off the, my situation and relieve my boredom, I began to paint. First, I experimented with watercolors, and then I moved on to oil. There weren't many objects in my room, but there was a mirror, and so I became my primary subject. My first self-portrait was finished in September of 1926. I named it Self-Portrait in a Velvet Dress, and I gifted it to Alejandro, though we were no longer a couple. By 1929, I had recovered enough to marry a famous Mexican muralist and fellow communist named Diego Rivera. We first met in 1922 when he worked on a project at my high school. I had watched in the lecture hall as he painted a huge mural called The Creation and was fascinated by him. 
When I met him again in 1928, we began a relationship, and the following year I became his wife. We shared political views, and we supported and encouraged each other's artistic work. But there was also much we disagreed on. Our marriage was always fiery. Diego received commissions from all over the world, and I often traveled with him. In 1930, we lived in San Francisco, California, and it was there the following year that I painted a wedding portrait called Frida and Diego Rivera. I showed it at the sixth annual exhibition of the San Francisco Society of Women Artists. We moved to New York City in 1933, where Diego was commissioned by Nelson Rockefeller to create a mur mural for the RCA building at Rockefeller Center. The mural was called Man at the Crossroads, and among its hundreds of characters, Diego included a portrait of communist leader Vladimir Lenin. Rockefeller was furious and put a stop to the project, then had it painted over. Diego was most unhappy, and a few months after this incident, we returned to Mexico, where we hosted the exiled Soviet communists Leon and Natalia Trotsky in 1937. I had an exhibition at a New York City gallery in 1938. It was my first solo show, and to my delight, I sold about half of the 25 paintings that were on display. This led to a commission from Claire Booth Luce, the editor of famous fashion magazine Vanity Fair. I became good friends with Andre Breton that same year. He was a leading figure in the surrealism artistic and literary movement. Although Andre considered my work to be surrealist, I disagreed. I painted my reality. However, I did submit two of my paintings to be displayed at the International Exhibition of Surrealism in 1940 at the Galleria de Arte Mexicano. In 1939, I went to live in Paris and displayed my work in the Cole Gallery. The Mexique exhibition included a self-portrait with a bright border of birds and flowers called the frame. This painting was brought, bought by the Louvre and was the first work by a 20th century Mexican artist to be purchased by the famed art museum. When I returned home to Mexico, Diego and I divorced. I expressed my feelings in a painting called The Two Fridas, it showed two versions of me sitting side by side. One Frida wears white and has a damaged heart, while the other Frida wears bold colors and has an undamaged heart. They represent feeling unloved and loved. However, we found we couldn't stay apart, and so the following year, in 1940, I remarried Diego. By 1941, my work was growing in popularity and had been included in several exhibitions. The Mexican government commissioned me to paint portraits of five important Mexican women. It was extremely exciting, but unfortunately, I was unable to complete the project. My beloved father died that year, and the health problems I had suffered from for most of my life began to get worse. I had to have several operations on my spine, and in 1944, I painted the broken column to express how I was feeling. It was a self-portrait showing me split down the middle with a cracked and broken stone column in place of my spine. There are lots of nails piercing my skin to represent the constant pain I was in. My health issues continued, and in 1950, I got gangrene in my right foot, which meant spending nine months in the hospital and having several more operations. Although I had limited mobility, I kept on painting and did my best to support political causes that were close to my heart. 1953 was a mixed year for me. In April, I was honored to receive my first solo exhibition in my home country of Mexico. I was determined to be there for the opening night despite being bedridden, 
so I arrived in an ambulance and spent the evening talking with guests from a bed that had been set up in the gallery. Then in August, I had to have part of my right leg removed in order to stop the gangrene from spreading. I chose to wear an ornate red boot on my prosthetic leg. Throughout the first half of 1954, I was in and out of hospital, out of the hospital with various ailments, including bronchial pneumonia. But I would not let my poor health stop my political work, even gathering the strength to join a street demonstration against North American intervention in Guatemala, which took place in July. It was to be my last public appearance. On my 47th birthday, I was dressed in full costume, did my makeup, and put flowers in my hair. I was then carried downstairs to meet my guests. By the evening, I was very tired, so I simply asked my guests to join me in my room and continued to chat with them from my bed. One week after my birthday, I passed away on the 13th of July, 1954. Many, many people came to my beloved blue house where I spent my last night to pay their respects and four years later it was turned into the Museo Frida Kahlo, a house museum. My husband Diego gave it to the Mexican people. When the feminist movement began in the 1970s, there was renewed interest in my work and I became an icon of female creativity. In the years since my death, Several books have been written about me, and there is even a film based on my life made in 2002. I hope that two essential lessons can be learned from looking back at my life. Firstly, remember that whatever the world throws at you, you can handle it. Don't let physical pain or disability hold you back or stop you from achieving your dreams. Secondly, is it important to know yourself so take the time to explore what makes you happy. And that is the end of the story. And here are a few of her um, paintings. She liked to paint herself with her animals. So you can see monkeys and a cat and her parrots. Thank you for taking the time to listen to um, the story of Frida Kahlo.